Yes, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, comrades, whichever time zone you're in. And uh, welcome to this discussion. Now, the Spanish conquest of the Americas took place uh, over 500 years ago. And therefore, one would think that uh, this is just uh, an historical uh, event, purely historical event that can be analyzed from a certain distance. But this is not the case. Just a few months ago, the Peruvian Nobel Prize winner Vargas Llosa, who is, in my opinion, a very good writer and also an extremely reactionary uh, pol political figure, said the following. America was a tower of Babel of many languages. He was talking before the Spanish conquest. And he added, and as a result, the Indians killed each other. Uh, the Spaniards came to solve that. This is the total sum of uh, wisdom from this Nobel Prize uh, winner. But this is not just an isolated uh, case. The whole of the Spanish uh, official historiography about the conquest talks of a meeting of civilizations, talks about the Spanish conquistadores bringing culture to the savage uh, natives, talks about the Spanish conquistadores peacefully evangelizing the Indians into the Christian uh, faith. And furthermore, we are told, this task was carried out by a small band of courageous men against all odds. And to be frank, comrades, this is all rubbish from start to finish. In fact, the Spanish conquest of the Americas was not a meeting of civilizations, but a bloody affair in which the conquistadors used the most brutal methods of terror to impose their will. It was not driven by the interest of bringing culture, but rather it was driven by the thirst for gold, the, the search for the loot, and led to the wholesale destruction of indigenous uh, cultures, which had flourished before the conquest, and in some cases reached very high levels of uh, development. So in order to understand, we need to adopt a materialist approach to this historical uh, event. And in the course of this uh, discussion, we will try to answer the following questions. What were the different cultures and peoples which existed in the American continent before the Spanish uh, conquest? What was Spain from a social, economic, and political point of view in the 15th and 16th centuries? What was the driving force behind the conquest of the America? And which were the consequences? If we start with uh, the situation of America prior to the Spanish uh, conquest, we need to discuss which were the different peoples which existed at that time. And we have to say that the answer is that there were a, a, a very large amount of different peoples at different, which were at very different stages of development. Uh, a number of them were hunter-gatherer societies at a very primitive level of development. There were also a number of other societies which had uh, mastered agriculture and become sedentary. Amongst these, for instance, were the Tainos who, who lived in the Caribbean uh, islands. And in reality, you can say that the Tainos lived in uh, what we describe as Marxist as primitive communism. There was no private property. Uh, an Italian uh, geographer, Pietro Martire, described them in the following way. It is proven that amongst them, the land belongs to everybody, just as does the sun or the water. They know no difference between meum and teum, and tuum, sorry. That is the, the Latin words for mine and yours. Uh, that source of all evils, he says. It is indeed a golden age neither ditches, nor hedges, nor walls to enclose their domains. They live in gardens open to all, without laws and without judges. Their conduct is naturally equitable, and whoever injures his neighbor is considered a criminal and an, and an outlaw. That, that, that doesn't sound like a bad idea <laughs> as, as to how to organize society. And it was really striking for the conquistadors and the people who came along with them to see this type of society and how it was organized. And then they proceeded to destroy them. But there were also a number of, of other peoples 
in the Americas, which had developed more complex societies, societies with a more developed uh, division of labor, with social stratification and hierarchy, and which they already had a state structure. As we know, agriculture and urban societies emerged independently in different parts of the, of the world. And amongst them, there were at least two sites for the independent development of agriculture and urban societies in the American uh, continent. And uh, uh, one of them was uh, in the north of uh, what today is Peru, with a civilization which is known as the Norte Chico. And the other one was in Mesoamerica with the Olmecs. In fact, if you, if you look at it from, a, from the point of view of historical materialism, what is striking is the way in which very similar processes took place independently from each other in different parts of the world. And this was the case in the American uh, continent, which after its initial wave of uh, population, uh, and there's a lot of discussion about when that took place. There's different uh, datings, and it's been, uh, it's been uh, by, recent by recent discoveries, it's been thrown back the time at which Americas were populated uh, initially. But what is clear is that uh, human groups in the American continent were largely cut off from contact with any other human groups in other parts of the world. And they developed autonomously. And what, I, what I'm trying to say is that it's very, it's very striking, it's very interesting to see that they in fact developed more or less along the same uh, lines as other human societies in other parts of the world with which they were not in contact. Amongst the peoples who had developed a more, more uh, complex type of society were also the Chipcha in uh, what is today uh, Colombia. And they, uh, they had a, a developed social structure and they were very good at uh, working with uh, gold for ornamental uh, purposes. But perhaps one of the greatest civilizations in the American continent uh, were, were the Mayas. They developed in Central uh, America. But by the time of the Spanish conquest, this civilization had already gone beyond uh, its peak uh, for reasons that we don't really uh, fully understand yet. The Mayans, independently of anyone else, had developed a, a complex system of writing. They had a very advanced uh, system of astronomic, uh, astronomical observations. And they had a calendar, a very complicated calendar based on three different uh, counts, which, were, which was more precise than the calendars that were used in Europe at the same time. Then there were the Mexicas, or also known as the Aztecs in what today is uh, Mexico, and the Incas in South America. And these were the two main civilizations that the Spanish uh, conquistadors encountered when they arrived in, in the continent. Both the Inca and the Mexica societies had a number of points in common, and their mode of production, the way they uh, produced uh, goods and sustenance, was very similar. And this mode of production was based uh, at the bottom on the common ownership of the land by the community. This common ownership of the land was known as the Ayllu amongst the Incas. The Ayllu was the name of the, of the land that was in common and the, and the, and the group of people that uh, worked and lived in, on that land. And amongst the Mexicas, it was known as the Calpuli. Uh, and above this local uh, community rose a state structure. And the state extracted uh, surplus from the community in the form of tribute. And this uh, tribute was then used to carry out public works, which were useful for the local uh, community, but which required an amount of labor that no single one of these communities could have carried out on their own. These this public works were, for instance, uh, irrigation uh, works, the building of canals, uh, aqueducts, the, the control of the flow of water in uh, lakes and so on. Also the building of uh, a road system, which allowed for the change of uh, goods between the different uh, local uh, communities. In some cases, the state was also responsible for the storage of food uh, which, which uh, allowed them to withstand periods of crop failures and so on. And this was particularly important amongst the Incas 
because their society was uh, built on the shores of the Pacific uh, Ocean, which is affected by uh, regularly occurring <coughs> uh, meteorological phenomena, El Nino, which provokes uh, crop failure, periods of uh, drought, and so on. So you see that uh, the tribute that the communities paid to the state was useful for the communities, but also there was another side to this, because of course, part of the tribute was also used by the priest caste and the ruling caste at the top of the state uh, for luxury consumption and for the building of religious and monumental uh, works. And some of them were really very striking and probably pl played a role in, uh, in establishing in ideology the domination of that ruling caste all over the people. This mode of production had many similarities with what Marx and Engels call the Asiatic mode of production. However, I think that we must be careful in using this uh, category. Marx always had a very serious scientific approach to the study of social phenomena. And he spent decades uh, in, in the reading room at the British Library, not far from here, uh, analyzing in detail the capitalist mode of production. And that he considered his main, main uh, life's work. But he, instead, he never fully analyzed the Asiatic mode of production. And he, re he referred to it only in passing in a couple of places as a hypothesis, which he, he never fully developed. And, and at the time when Marx was writing, the, the knowledge that existed of, say, for instance, Indian society was very basic. And the knowledge that existed about societies in Peru and uh, ancient societies in Peru and Mexico was even less. But there are a number of things that we can say without, without any doubt. These two societies were complex and developed. They had a state structure, but, but they were not feudal societies in any way. Under feudalism, the individual peasant pays tribute to the individual lord, and the individual lord is the owner of the land. These societies also were not based on slavery, where the individual slave owner is the owner of many slaves, and these many slaves work the land that is of his, own, uh, of his ownership. In, in these societies, instead, the main production union, unit was the agricultural-based commune. There was no private property of the land, and the commune paid tribute not to an individual uh, lord, but to the state as a whole. I won't, I won't be able to give a full detailed analysis of each one of these civilizations, but let's, let's look uh, for a minute to the Inca. The Inca civilization was known as the Tahuantinsuyu, which meant the four corners, and uh, rose up in the 13th century. And it was based, or is built on, the basis of previous societies which existed in the same uh, region, particularly the Tiwanaku and the Wari. From 1438, that is approximately 100 years or so before contact with the Spanish uh, conquistadors, the Inca started the very impressive territorial expansion and uh, the Inca Pachacuti. And at its peak, this uh, empire or civilization, however you want to call it, reached 3,000 square kilometers. It was going from uh, Colombia, what, what is today Colombia, all the way down to uh, Chile and Argentina. And it was going in the, in the east from, so, sorry, it was going from the edge of the Amazonian jungle to all the way to the Pacific uh, coast. And uh, at its peak, it had about 12 million inhabitants. Approximately, it's difficult to get precise figures, obviously. Some, some historians have argued that this was the largest empire uh, at the time, i.e. the one that had the largest extension of land from one end to another. And as you can see, this, uh, the geographic conditions uh, were very peculiar, and they, and they shaped the way they developed their economy. So this, this is a civilization that was based on the, on the Andean uh, mountains, very high peaks. These very, these very high peaks are very close to the Pacific uh, coast which is extremely dry. For instance, one of the driest places on Earth is the Atacama Desert. 
the humid winds that were coming from the Amazonian jungle will uh, hit these very high mountains and uh, release the water on, on the other side. And therefore, they had to have a very, um, they, they, they developed a very complex forms of agriculture based on terracing along, along the side of the, these very high Andean uh, mountains in order to create uh, cultivation land. They developed very complex irrigation systems, which captured the, the water from the snow in the, in the Andean uh, peaks and distributed it in the, in the lowland val valleys. They also used fertilizers, uh, including uh, guano, for instance, which then became a, a major export uh, product later on. They developed genetic engineering, which allowed them to develop uh, an, an, an enormous amount, variety of strands of different plants that they were using, particularly, particularly the potatoes, which were, which were adapted to being cultivated, being grown in a different levels of uh, altitude, a different uh, degrees of uh, sun cover and temperature and so on. They also very skillfully used the, the many very different uh, ecosystems that their society was based uh, on and uh, changing products between one and the other. And they had also developed met methods for preserving uh, the food uh, all, all year round by, for instance, freezing the potatoes, drying the meat by a process called charqui, from, from which the word uh, jerk uh, meat comes from. They had also domesticated the llama and the alpaca, which were the only two large animals that existed in the, in the region. And they used them both for meat and for wool, and also for transportation. These animals were very well adapted to mountain uh, roads and passages. But um, they had the, the, the amount that you could load on these animals was not so big. And because of the, of the nature of mountain uh, roads, they could, they could, you, you couldn't attach a cart to the, to, the, to the animal. And because of the very narrow terraces where the agriculture was, was developed, you couldn't use these animals for traction for, for agriculture. They also had very impressive, impressive monumental architecture and also an elaborate system of roads that covered the whole uh, empire. They worked gold and silver for ornamental uh, purposes to very high level of skill. They had advanced agriculture, uh, sorry, they had advanced pottery, and they were very skilled in cloth making, which greatly impressed the Spanish conquistadors. The Ayllus, the, 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 com the agrarian uh, community, paid tribute uh, in labor and in kind. The, the, the labor tribute was called the Mita, and uh, every IU had to provide a certain number of people for a certain number of months to work for the state. And while they were away, the rest of the community tended to the parcel of the communal uh, land and provided them with food and sustenance. The Inca, the Inca society was characterized by, by a very strict organization of labor and division of society. Everything was accounted for. And this was shown in the fact that although they did not develop a proper writing system, they had a system for recording, for, for recording the tributes, for recording the number of people in each IU, for recording uh, everything, which was called uh, the kipu and was based on, on uh, strings in which a number of knots were, were made. This is a unique system which has uh, to this day not been uh, fully de deciphered. The, the Mexica, on the other hand, which, which are also known as the Aztecs, and their, their society is sometimes called the Aztec Empire. I'm not, not gonna go into this discussion, it's quite, quite complicated, and uh, I can't say I fully understand it my, myself. But basically, these this, this were the people that had migrated from the north uh, down to the Central Valley of uh, Mexico. But when they arrived at the Central Valley of Mexico, this was already populated by uh, other societies that had taken uh, up most of the available uh, land. So in uh, 1325, the Mexicas built their capital, Tenochtitlan, in the middle of Lake Texcoco. By recovering land from it, by building platforms on which they built their city. Like the Incas, the, the Mexicas built on previous developments of other societies that had existed in the region. 
In this case, for instance, the, the Teotihuacan and the Olmec uh, civilizations. Because they were hemmed in amongst all these other peoples that had already established themselves before, the, the Mexicas were a warrior people. And progressively, over a period of time, they managed to subjugate uh, their neighbors and establish their own uh, uh, civilization as the dominant one. By 1427, they established like a tripartite alliance, a three-city alliance, together with Texcoco and Tlacopan. And this uh, three-city three, three city alliance reached uh, the peak of its development in 1519, the, the peak of its geographic expansion. In 1519, the year in which uh, Cortes landed in the Yucatan Peninsula. In fact, by this time, what had originally been uh, an alliance of three cities on equal footing was already completely dominated by uh, Tenochtitlan, the, the, the capital of the Mexicas. The Mexicas based their agriculture on the Chinampa, which were floating platforms on the lake, which had been built by uh, piling up soil on, on the freshwater uh, lake. And, and these, were, these, these were extremely fertile, giving up to seven crops a year. And in order to maintain this uh, system, they created a system of dikes, ditches, causeways, which regulated the level of water in the lakes and also ensured the, the clear separation between fresh water and salt water, which existed in some of the lakes. These highly productive chinampas allowed for the rapid expansion of Tenochtitlan. And although, although there is a huge discrepancy between different historians about, about the, the population of Tenochtitlan, Tenochtitlan at its peak, by 1519, this was a huge city which had between 80,000 or perhaps up to 300,000 inhabitants. And this was, and this was clearly uh, larger than any city in uh, Spain. And it could only be compared to the largest European cities of the time, like Paris, which had about 225,000, or Naples, which had 125,000. The agriculture of the, of the Mexicas was based on uh, maize, uh, sweet potato, cotton, chili peppers, pumpkins, beans, and they also had domesticated the, the turkey. Unlike the Incas, which had uh, an economy that was completely dominated by the state, the, the Mexicas had developed a system of long-distance uh, commerce, uh, which was uh, carried out by a dedicated class of traders, the Pochtecas. The expansion, the territorial expansion of the Me Mexica empire was very fast and was based on the imposing of tribute on the subjugated peoples. Some of these, if they had been defeated in uh, battle, were, had, had uh, rulers imposed by the Mexica, but others were allowed to keep their own rulers as long as they paid uh, tribute. It has, to be, it has to be mentioned that, uh, that uh, the American civilizations faced, an, faced, an, faced a number of constraints. The main one was the lack of large domesticable animals, which could be used for transportation or traction for agriculture. For instance, the, the Mexicas knew, had discovered the wheel, and they had many toys with wheels. But the wheel was not used for transportation because there were no animals amongst the Mexicas that could uh, carry those carts. And while both societies had very advanced and intricate uh, ornamental metallurgy, neither of them had developed iron smelting and bronze was very sparsely used. In fact, by the time the Spanish conquistadors uh, arrived, both societies, both the Incas and the, and the Mexicas, seemed to have reached the peak of their development, and they were riddled by internal contradictions and the discontent of the most recently uh, conquered uh, peoples that were subjected to tribute. So what was Spain in the 15th and 16th century? Uh, Spain was the product of the general development of uh, feudalism in Europe, but also had certain uh, peculiar characteristics, features. The 14th, cen 14th century uh, had seen a period of crisis in feudalism across Europe, changes in weather, bad crops, the development of epidemics, and this led to generalized discontent and peasant uh, revolts in the 14th and 15th centuries. And this conflict was resolved with the emergence of absolute monarchies. 
And these absolute monarchies were balancing, uh, you could say in a Bonapartist way, between, between the power of the cities and the power of the noblemen. Uh, and Spain was a clear example of uh, this and the Charles the First, fifth of Germany. And at the same time of this crisis of feudalism, we see the emergence, the, the, the beginning of the emergence of a, of a bourgeois class, mainly represented by uh, merchant capitalism. This was, this was also the case in Spain. Catalonia, which was part of the Aragon, the crown of Aragon, dominated trade in the Mediterranean. And Spain exported large amounts of uh, wool to Flanders. The, the unification of Spain had been carried out as a result of a centuries-long uh, struggle against the Muslim uh, rulers uh, in the south, which was only completed in 1492 with the conquest of Granada. This period of constant warfare, which lasted for centuries, created a large uh, section of the population which were like traveling knights that were at the service of the king and uh, being paid in the loot of what they called uh, conquer. And they, the Hidalgos, uh, impoverished uh, lower level uh, noblemen, uh, which were accustomed to fighting, be became the backbone of the Spanish conquest of America. It's also, it's also important to realize that this uh, war against the Moorish kingdoms in the south had been conducted under, under the official banner of Christendom. Which, uh, which played a key role also in the ideology of the Spanish conquest of the Americas. But we need, we need to ask ourselves, what was the motivation in Columbus's voyage, which, uh, which uh, made contact for the first time with the Caribbean islands? What he was looking for, he was searching for a route towards China and India, a route for commerce through the east. So sorry, a route through, through the west to the east. That's my, my, my geography. And this was because the direct land route had been blocked by the fall of Constantinople in 1453. So whatever the official reasons and justifications given uh, afterwards, the, the whole enterprise was motivated by commercial interest. The voyages themselves were funded by commercial capitalists. And above all, they were searching for gold. And, and here's a, a quote from Engels that explains this process in a brilliant uh, way, I think. He says, how deeply the foundations of feudality had been weakened and its structure corroded by money around the end of the 15th century is striking, strikingly evident in the lust for gold which possessed Western Europe at this time. It was gold that the Portuguese sought on the African coast in India and in the whole Far East, gold was the magic word which lured the Spaniards over the ocean to America. Gold was the first thing that the whites asked for when they set foot on a newly discovered coast. And Engels then explains what's the meaning of this. But this compulsion to embark on distant adventures in search for gold, however feudal were the forms which it took at first, was nonetheless basically incompatible with feudalism, the foundation of which was agriculture, and the conquests of which were directed at the acquisition of land. To this must be added that shipping was definitely a bourgeois business. So what Engels is trying to say is that the form the conquest took uh, was feudal, but the content was uh, in reality capitalist, in this case mer merchant capitalist. Also, we have to say that the conquest of, the, of America was only made possible by a whole series of uh, technological uh, developments which existed at the time, which had very little to do with Spain itself. Amongst these were the Astrolab, which allowed for astronomical observations at sea, the compass, gunpowder, which made possible early primitive firearms like cannons and arquebuses that the Spaniards uh, used, it was also made possible by the development of uh, sea-going uh, uh, boats, mainly the caravel, and then later on the nao, which was uh, which 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 had uh, which was much bigger. The the caravel was a relatively small but highly maneuverable uh, boat, which had been developed in the fight against pirates in the Mediterranean, and and had uh, been used first by the Portuguese in the early exploration and expoliation of uh, of Africa and some of the Atlantic islands. 
Very importantly, the, the caravels were able to uh, sail windward, that is, uh, navigate windward, uh, that is against the wind. And also the Portuguese sailors and explorers had perfected the knowledge of oceanic currents, which made possible the, the crossing of the Atlantic. Of course, all of this knowledge uh, concentrated in uh, the Spanish uh, crown. And the Spaniards also added, for instance, the, the steel sword, which they had perfected over centuries of uh, warfare. Sp Spain, therefore, at the time of the conquest was uh, highly contradictory. It was a feudal country, uh, a reactionary monarchy, which was to embark in the, in, which was to be the, the main force of the counter-reformation in uh, Europe dominated by Catholic obscurantism and the institution of the Inquisition, but at the same time a nation that was propelled onto this uh, Atlantic uh, voyage of discovery by the powerful impulse of merchant capitalism. The conquest itself was a brutal, bloody affair, which started with enslavement of the local population of the Taino Indians in the Caribbean islands by extremely brutal methods. The Tainos uh, rebelled and resisted, but they were massacred. If anyone wants to know the details, you can uh, read uh, the description that Bartolomé de las Casas makes in his, in his a short account of the destruction of the Indies. He, he was a Spanish priest, which participated in the conquest and then, uh, and, and then became a defender of the rights of the, of the Indian populations. The Spanish conquistadors used terror as a, as, a, as a weapon to dominate these uh, populations by cutting, people's, uh, cutting off people's noses, uh, ears, hands, and other limbs, burning them at the stake, using specially trained mastiff dogs to set them on the local uh, population. If you want to call this a meeting of civilizations, uh, go ahead, but uh, it was not. The intolerable conditions which the Taino Indians were subjected to by the Spanish uh, conquistadors in the mines le led to a massive amount of deaths and the practical uh, extermination of the population in this whole uh, uh, region. Many of the Taino Indians committed suicide or uh, had deliberate miscarriages. They, they did not want to live in that way. And the massive extermination of the local population in the Caribbean had two effects. One was the, 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 the introduction of slavery, because they, they, needed, uh, they needed labor power to work in the, in the plantations and in the mines. And the other was the push towards looting other territories in the north, in the, towards the, the west, in the south. And this is what led to the conquest of uh, Mexico. And the question has been posed by historians and, uh, and official ideologists of how, how was it possible for a small number of Spaniards, 400 at the beginning that went with Cortes, and 1,100 at the peak of the campaign, uh, to conquer and subjugate the Mexicas, which was a highly developed civilization uh, skilled in warfare. And this furthermore was accomplished in a relatively short campaign between February 1519 and August 1521. And the key factor here was that it wasn't really 400 Spanish conquistadores that carried out this uh, feat, but that the Spaniards led by uh, Hernán Cortés were very skilled in using the internal contradictions which already existed in the Mexica Empire. At every single step, they met one people, for instance, the Totonacas, right at the, at the beginning, they promised them help in freeing themselves from tribute to the Mexicas. At the same time, Cortes was telling the Mexica ambassadors that Cortes was on the Mexicas uh, side. Uh, and in this way, they managed to get uh, local allies to fight these big battles together with them. Uh, for instance, uh, when, when uh, Cortes defeated the Tlaxcaltecas, in a couple of uh, battles, he did, he did so uh, together with uh, hundreds of uh, Totonac fighters. But this still leaves one question to answer. Why would any of these local peoples choose to ally themselves with this small number of, uh, of foreign uh, people that had just arrived? First of all, the Spaniards used the element of surprise. 
The local peoples had never seen horses or dogs used in uh, warfare. They had never seen dogs or horses, and never mind being used on, in warfare. They had never experienced firearms, which the Spaniards uh, had, although in small number. The Spanish steel swords and lances also gave them an advantage. And this was particularly the case because of the different fighting techniques, the different ways in which the, the, the different peoples made war. The different peoples that the Spaniards met in, the, in, the, in what is today Mexico, the form of warfare was mainly hand-to-hand -hand combat by individual warriors with the aim of taking uh, prisoners, which will then be sacrificed. But the aim of the Spaniards was completely different. They didn't want to take prisoners. They wanted to kill as many as possible in order to instill terror and win the battle. And this was better done from atop a horse with a long uh, steel sword or a lance. Even so, the, super, the superiority in weaponry or, or types of warfare doesn't explain the full uh, story, because some, some of the Spanish uh, weaponry was not very uh, appropriate for the conditions in America. Gunpowder will get wet in the humid uh, conditions, was also in short supply. The arquebus was, was a very cumbersome early uh, form of, uh, of firearm. It had to be reloaded every single time. It could only fire once every minute or two minutes. Even the steel armor plates that they, the Spaniards used at the beginning were, were not adequate for the very hot and humid uh, climate of the Americas that they encountered. In fact, very quickly, the Spaniards replaced the armor, uh, the steel armor, uh, largely by, uh, for, for the local version of armor, which was uh, different layers of, of cotton woven uh, together. So in reality, this, this factor, the technological superiority, had to be combined with other factors on its own wouldn't explain uh, uh, the results. Uh, and, and, and the other factor is precisely this, the alliances with local peoples who were already at odds with the Mexi Mexicas. Therefore, the internal contradictions of the Mexica empire played a key role in all of this. And in order to solidify these alliances, Cortes used methods of uh, terror. For instance, the, massa the massacre of Cholula early on in the campaign. At this time, Cortes had already allied himself with the uh, Tlaxcaltecas, and he carried out a brutal massacre of the, of the, in, in Cholula, in which uh, thousands died in the space of, uh, in a massacre that lasted for two days. And this helped solidify the, the alliance with the Tlaxcaltecas, and also sent a very clear message to the Mexicas of what the Spaniards were capable of doing. The question of the quality of the leadership also enters into the equation. Cortes was a cunning, skilled politician and a maneuverer, which was driven, very powerfully driven, by the thirst for the loot, while Moctezuma, on the other hand, seems to have been indecisive at crucial uh, moments of the, of the campaign. And this indecisiveness probably reflects the internal contradictions which already existed in the Mexica society. Finally, it's important to mention the role of disease in the Spanish uh, conquest. The Spaniards brought a whole series of infectious uh, diseases, which were unknown in, in America, including smallpox and measles. Because they were unknown in, in America, the mortality rate of these epidemics was very high, 80 or 90 percent, perhaps. And this was to play a crucial role, for instance, in the conquest of Peru. When the Spaniards uh, arrived, in uh, 1532, led by Pizarro, an illiterate, particularly brutal uh, conquistador, with forces that numbered only 180, the epidemic had already arrived prior to the arrival of the conquistadors. And thousands were dying from a previously unknown disease for which they there was no cure. And this had a powerful psychological impact, as you, as you can imagine. Furthermore, when Pizarro arrived, this was in the middle of a civil war over the succession of uh, Huayna Capac, the, 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 the Inca ruler, and the two sons, Huascar and Atahualpa, of, uh, of uh, Huayna Capac, were fighting uh, in this civil war, uh, dividing the whole empire in two warring camps. And Pizarro was, again, uh, skillful in using what? In using treachery, uh, terror, 
bloodletting in order to impose its uh, will and capture uh, Atahualpa, who had uh, won the civil war against his brother. In the massacre of Cajamarca, he, he massacred 8,000 people who would come with uh, Atahualpa unarmed into the, into the town square, and as a result, captured Atahualpa. And this is another important point. The fact that these were hierarchical uh, societies, both the Incas and the Mexicas, meant that once the Spaniards had captured the main leader, it was easier to control the whole structure. Ironically, other societies which were at a, at a lower level of uh, development, where there was no, high, no, no developed society, no state, no such developed hierarchy, these other societies were, were able to fight and resist the Spanish uh, conquistadors for much longer uh, by using methods of guerrilla struggle and so on, like, for instance, the, the Shishimecas and uh, the Mapuche in the Shishimecas in uh, Mexico and the Mapuche in Chile, which resisted for decades. However, there was also resistance. This is not to say there was no resistance in, in, in other places. The Incas uh, resisted uh, very much. There was an early rebellion led by Manco Inca and Tupac Amaru, which reestablished the Inca state based in uh, Vilcabamba, laid siege to the Spaniards, and it took them decades to defeat them, up until 1572. So what were the consequences of the Spanish uh, conquest of the Americas? First of all, a, a massive destruction of indigenous peoples and their cultures. The, the population of the Caribbean islands, as I already said, was almost practically completely exterminated. The population of the Aztec Empire, which uh, at its peak was probably about 20 million, in less than 70 years had collapsed to 2 million through a combination of uh, overwork, massacres, the impact of disease. The Spaniards systematically destroyed the temples of these uh, cultures. Beautiful works of art, which were made in silver and gold, were melted uh, down to be taken as uh, loot. Perhaps one of the worst crimes of the Spanish conquistadors from a cultural point of view was the destruction of the Maya codices, beautiful uh, books containing the history and literature. Hundreds of thousands died in hard labor in the silver and gold mines across the Spanish uh, empire. And this also led to the massive development of the slave trade. Millions of black people were captured in Africa and transported in inhuman conditions to be worked to death in the sugarcane and tobacco plantations. There's quite a lot of other things that I wanted to say, but my, my time's coming to an end. But there's two important consequences of the Spanish conquest that should at least be mentioned and can be developed in the discussion. One, the Spanish conquest and looting of the Americas was a key component part of the process of primitive accumulation of capital. And this is very well explained by, uh, by Marx. But the second one is that, ironically, this did not benefit Spain in the long term. Yes, for, for at the beginning, uh, Charles V was able to fund his wars in uh, Europe and his empire with the gold and the loot from uh, America. But at the same time, this, this meant that he was not obliged to make any concessions to the nas nation uh, bourgeoisie, to the nation merchant capitalist class. It killed the potential development of capitalism in Spain before it had properly started. And therefore, it sealed the backwardness of Spain for centuries to come, benefiting, on the other hand, those nations that uh, had carried out bourgeois revolutions and were more uh, they, they were they're more amenable to, be, to use these uh, massive amounts of uh, money for the development of capitalism. Our main task is to try to understand this process from the point of view of uh, historical materialism, to brush to one side the political and ideological justifications and embellishment uh, that the Spanish ruling class makes of this uh, historic uh, episode, and also to understand that the way in, in which the Spanish conquest took place had the impact of also sealing the backwardness of Latin America for many centuries to come. This is a vast subject. There are many more things that I could have uh, said. But I hope that this introduction has whetted the comrades' uh, appetite to learn more about it. Thank you very much.
But thank you very much uh, to you, Jorge, for this uh, very interesting and very rich introduction. Now we can open the debate. The first speaker will be Ubaldo Oropesa from the Mexican section of the IMT. Ubaldo will be speaking in uh, Spanish. Sí, gracias. Eh, gracias a Jordi por la introducción que estuvo muy buena. Thank you, Jordi, for that great introduction. Dice Marx en el prólogo a la contribución de la economía política. Marx said in his prologue to the critique of political economy. Al llegar a una fase determinada de desarrollo, las fuerzas productivas materiales de la sociedad entran en contradicción con las relaciones de producción existentes. When societies reach a certain stage of development in the productive forces, they enter a contradiction with the existing relations of production. Estas son las bases materiales para la revolución. These are bases for revolution. Más adelante dice. He further adds. Ninguna formación social desaparece antes de que desarrolle todas las fuerzas productivas que caben dentro de ella y jamás aparecen nuevas y más elevadas relaciones de producción antes de que las condiciones materiales para su existencia hayan madurado dentro de la propia sociedad antigua. No social formation disappears before the productive forces that get within it and new or higher relations of production never appear before the material conditions had outgrown its previous society. Estas dos frases son puntos fundamentales para entender todas las sociedades que han existido, incluidas las sociedades prehispánicas. These two phrases are fundamental for the understanding of societies that have existed, including prehispanic societies. Antes de la llegada de los españoles a la que hoy se conoce como continente americano, existía una variedad de sociedades que se movían a diferentes ritmos de desarrollo. Before the arrival of the Spanish to what is now known as the American continent, there was a variety of societies that moved at different paces of development. Por ejemplo, existían tribus recolectoras que se regían por el matrilineado, particularmente en el sur de Chile, y por el otro lado existían grandes ciudades, estados como la Mexica o la Inca, las cuales eran gobernadas por una burocracia muy dura, con familias que dirigían las ciudades, estados de forma hereditaria. For instance, there were matriarchal gathered tribes, and on the other hand, there were big cities like the Mexica or Inca, which were ruled by a very hard bureaucracy with families that ruled the cities in a dynastical way. Cada una de estas comunidades tenía una forma de dirección muy distinta. En las más pequeñas se alzaba la mano para votar en asambleas. La tierra era controlada por la comunidad o el calpuli. Each of these communities had their own form of being run. The smallest would raise their hands to vote in an assembly, and the land was controlled by the community, Calpuli. Pero en las ciudades grandes hay castas dirigentes, familias señoriales, familias de guerreros y clérigos. La posesión de la tierra era comunal, pero la administración la desarrollaba el mismo estado. But in the larger towns, there were ruling castes, senior families of warriors and clergy. The possession of the land was communal, but it was administrated by the state. Más rico de estas sociedades, de modo de producción asiático, se desarrollaban muy lentamente. En esta lentitud hay avances que hacen las diferencias entre ellas y son enormes. Marx said that these societies with an Asiatic mode of production developed very slowly. And within this, you could find advances that were different between them and they were huge. El caso de Tenochtitlán es emblemático. La ciudad se fundó en 1324. Comienza como súbdita de otras ciudades. Eran utilizados como sicarios regionales. 200 años después, era la ciudad más importante de toda la gran región. The case of Tenochtitlán es emblemático. The town was founded in 1324 and it started sub being subjected to other cities. It was used as the assassin for the region. 200 years later, it was the most important city of this major region. La producción se basaba en la producción de la tierra, en la explotación de la tierra y de las chinampas por medio del trabajo tributario, pero la fortaleza de esta sociedad no venía de ahí, del desarrollo de las fuerzas productivas, sino del conglomerado de fuerzas políticas y militares de la triple, triple alianza que dirigía, eh, quien dirigía esta alianza eran los aztecas. Production was based in production of the land and the exploitation of the chinampas, through which labor was tribute. But the strength of this society didn't come from there. It was the development of the productive forces and the strength of the political and military alliances, the triple alliance. 
which was led by the Aztecs. La conformación de las ciudades-estado se da por la agrupación de pequeños pueblos que son sometidos por medio del tributo. La ciudad se convierte en el centro aglutinador político y económico donde vivían en, en Tenochtitlán aproximadamente 700.000 personas sumando a su periferia. The formation of these cities are, is through the aggregation of small towns that are subjected to tribute. The town turns into the center of political and economical accumulation, where almost 700,000 people lived, including its periphery. La Triple Alianza dominaba eh, cerca de 400 pueblos que van desde el centro de lo que hoy es México hasta Nicaragua. Para mantener este dominio, se tuvo la necesidad de un ejército profesional, más burócratas y más recursos. The Triple Alliance dominated 400 towns, which started on the middle of Mexico to what now is Nicaragua. To maintain this dominion, it was needed to have an army and also stronger bureaucrats and more resources. Mientras más crecía y se extendía su poder político, se hacía más dependiente de los tributos. La ciudad solo producía un 25% de lo que consumía. Lo demás es decir, un 75% eran tributos impuestos a todo el mundo que estaba alrededor. While the political power was growing, it was still dependent on tributes. The town was only capable of producing 25% of its consumption and the rest, 75%, would come from tributes. Es decir, había una contradicción insalvable, la imposibilidad de desarrollar las fuerzas productivas y la necesidad de un aparato militar y una burocracia más grande tarde o temprano llegaría a manifestarse de forma violenta. Which led to a huge contradiction, the impossibility of developing the productive forces and the necessity of a military apparatus and a larger bureaucracy, which sooner or later would manifest in a violent way. Los tributos eran una carga muy pesada para los pueblos dominados y los sectores más bajos de la sociedad de Tenochtitlán. Esto fue ahondando las rivalidades y los odios entre los diferentes pueblos. Tributes were a huge way on the smaller towns and the smaller sectors of the society in Tenochtitlan. This started to strengthen the rivalry and hatred among towns. Había un odio extendido hacia, la, hacia los aztecas porque su dominio era brutal. Todos los pueblos que eran sometidos Um, se le respetaba su organización política. Aquellos que no eran sometidos um, eran dominados de manera directa. There was hatred towards the Aztecs. Those that respected their political structure were allowed to continue. Others were directly influenced by the Aztecs. Este odio eh, fue utilizado en el momento de la conquista por los españoles. This hatred was then used by the Spanish during the conquest. Basta decir que la falta de desarrollo de las fuerzas productivas comenzó a ser mella en las relaciones sociales de la sociedad. Sin embargo, esta fue cortada por la conquista. Needless to say, the slow development of the productive forces started to wither the re social relationships among themselves. But this was even worsened by the conquest. Podemos decir que no pudimos ver un desenlace de las contradicciones internas por la invasión. We couldn't see the contradictions go forward because of the invasion. Había en germen algunas otras formas eh, de productivas nacientes, pero no con la suficiente fuerza para presentarse como una, alternat una alternativa frente al modo de producción asiático. There were other forces of production up and coming, but they weren't strong enough to present themselves as the true alternative to the Asiatic mode of production. Había algunos esclavos que servían a las familias nobles. Comenzaban a ver tierras privadas pertenecientes a la alta nobleza, pero ello no fue un eh, modo predominante en la sociedad. There were few slaves that served noble families, and there was private land among the nobles, but it wasn't very dominant. El tributo no solamente era en especie, también era en trabajo. Los tributos, los, particularmente los que vivían al, alrededor de la ciudad, pagaban, se pagaban sus tributos a partir de la siembra de las tierras de las clases gobernantes. Tribute wasn't based just on products, it was also based on labor. 
También se desarrolló un gran mercado donde se reunían más de 50 mil personas para intercambiar sus productos, pero tampoco era dominante en el, el intercambio libre de mercancías. There was also a large market where over 50,000 people would come together to exchange their products, but it wasn't dominant enough. Habían algunos productos que eran utilizados como moneda, sin embargo, el dinero no estaba, eh, no era este, una circulación permanente ni regular. Some products were used as currency, but money was not permanently circulating. Especular que hubiera pasado si los españoles no hubieran llegado es una tontería, pero podríamos decir que seguramente la, la sociedad hubiera entrado en contradicción y se hubieran extendido las posibilidades de otras sociedades, o esclavista o feudal. To speculate what could have happened if the Spanish hadn't arrived is foolish, but we can be certain that society would have entered this contradiction and it would have extended to the possibilities of another society, like a slave society or the feudal system. También existe la posibilidad de una implosión donde la sociedad se pudo haber desgarrada en guerras civiles internas, como había sucedido tiempo atrás en otras sociedades como la teotihuacana. There is also the possibility of explosion, where societies could have torn themselves apart through civil wars, like it had happened before in Teotihuacan. En todo caso, eh, vuelvo a repetir, la conquista lo que hizo fue cortar eh, o redirigir estas contradicciones hacia otro punto. So I repeat, what the conquest did was just to redirect all these contradictions. Pero fueron utilizadas para acentuar la conquista de los españoles hacia las tierras eh, latinoamericanas. But these contradictions were also used by the Spanish to further their invasion into the Latin American soil. Por último decir que estas sociedades no eran idílicas, como las quieren pintar algunos amorosos de los viejos malos tiempos. Eran sociedades basadas en la explotación por medio del tributo. Tenían una filosofía interesante y valiosa, pero eran sociedades cargadas de contradicciones. Lastly, these societies were not idyllic as postmodernists tried to paint them. They were societies based on the exploitation through tribute. They had a philosophy that was interesting and valuable, but it was It was heavy with contradictions. No podemos estudiarlas eh, con romanticismo, sino asumir sus múltiples contradicciones que tenían. We can't study them with romanticism, but we must an analyze them with their multiple contradictions. El día de hoy hay corrientes, eh, en América Latina particularmente, la de colonial, que plantean que lo que existió antes de la llegada de los españoles era una sociedad eh, idílica a la que tenemos que regresar. Today in Latin America, you have the decolonized train of thought that pushes the narrative that society was idyllic before the arrival of the Spanish. Pintan todo de una manera maravillosa, como color de rosa, como diciendo que en esas sociedades no había ningún tipo de contradicción y explotación. They portray everything as peaceful through rose-tinted glasses that deny the exploitation of the time. Pero esto es falso. This is false. No solamente, como bien lo dijo Jordi, eh, la conquista se pudo dar por las contradicciones internas, por el choque de las culturas que, que hubo, eh, sino también por una guerra intestina que había en los diferentes pueblos latinoamericanos desde hacía 600 años atrás. No only, like Jordi said, was this false, but there was only rivalry among the towns in the American continent that caused these contradictions to go forward. Eso es todo. Gracias. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ubaldo, for this contribution. Carlos Che from uh, the Mexican section. Eh, la conquista española y en particular la caída de Tenochtitlan fue un punto de inflexión en la historia. The Spanish uh, conquest and uh, particularly the fall of Tenochtitlan was uh, um, inflection history. Los mexicas, a los que muchas veces se le llaman aztecas, eran la cultura más poderosa de Mesoamérica. The mexicas, which are commonly referred as the Aztecs, uh, were the most powerful culture in Mesoamérica. Con su conquista se aseguró el dominio de las culturas que antes eran dominadas por ellos. Uh, when they were conquered, it was also assured uh, the domain over the cultures that were formerly, formerly uh, ruled by them. 
Esto se sumó a los pactos con los pueblos que se aliaron con los españoles, llevando a estos a un enorme poder. Uh, this was added to the pacts uh, that were uh, arranged uh, with the peoples that allied with the Spaniards, uh, giving them an enormous power. Un punto de inflexión es un cambio fundamental en la situación que da un viraje brusco. An inflection point is a fundamental change in the situation uh, that uh, means um, a sudden turn. El proceso de conquista inició antes de la caída de Tenochtitlan y posterior a esta continuó un largo camino. The process of the conquest uh, began uh, even before uh, the, the fall of Tenochtitlan and after it, uh, it went a long road. Pero este suceso significó un cambio fundamental. But this um, happenstance uh, meant um, a fundamental change. Los efectos que esto traerían influirían en transformar el mundo. The effect, uh, the, yeah, the consequences of this uh, could transform the world. Este proceso dará un empuje que desarrolló el comercio a límites no vistos anteriormente. Uh, this uh, process uh, could uh, push a development of commerce to limits not uh, seen before. De un importante impulso al capitalismo. It gave an important push to capitalism. Lo que movía a los conquistadores era la sed de oro. The motivation of the conquistadors was the thirst for gold. La búsqueda de riquezas. The search for wealth. Se encontraron riquezas, pero en un, en un inicio no suficientemente rentables para cubrir las expediciones. Uh, wealth was uh, found, but in the beginning, this was not profitable enough to pay for the expeditions. Otros pueblos serían conquistados como los mayas que ya no estaban en su periodo de esplendor. Other uh, people were conquered such as the Mayans that were no longer in their prime. Los purépechas eran otro de los imperios mesoamericanos además de los tlaxcaltecas que no habían sido conquistados por los mexicas. The purépechas was another Mesoamerican empire Uh, that, uh, like the classical texts, uh, had not been conquered by the Mexicas. Ellos no se habían aliado con los españoles para combatir a los Mexicas. They didn't uh, ally with the Spaniards to fight against the Mexicas. Los conquistadores y los purépechas llegaron a un acuerdo que aceptaba el dominio de los primeros a cambio de concesiones y el respeto de los gobernantes indígenas. Uh, the first ones... Uh, reach an agreement with the Spaniards uh, so that um, they could ex exchange um, dominion uh, so that the, the Indian rulers were respected. Las contradicciones entre los conquistadores terminarían con esta alianza. The contradictions uh, amongst the conquistadors would uh, finish this alliance. Nuño de Guzmán mandó a asesinar al gobernante Purépecha y con eso des desarticuló a esta cultura. Nuño de Guzmán managed uh, the Purépecha ruler to be killed and uh, in this way he dismantled this culture. Nuño de Guzmán reprimió a los Purépechas y actuó de una forma más sanguinaria que Hernán Cortés. Nuño de Guzmán Cinco repressed minutos. the Purépechas and was even more bloodthirsty than Hernán Cortés. Si bien teníamos sociedades con cierto desarrollo, también había sociedades atrasadas. Uh, there were some developed uh, societies as well as some backward ones. En la zona conocida como el Bajío y en el norte de América, había culturas nómadas o seminómadas. In the area known as el Bajío, uh, as well as in the north of America, there were nomadic and seminomadic cultures. Los mexicas les llamaban despectivamente chichimecas, que significa come perros. The mexicas would call them in a contemptuous way chichimecas, which means those who eat dogs. Los conquistadores estaban tomando control de una nueva región a la que llamaron Nueva Galicia. The conquistadors were uh, seizing control of a new region uh, called New Galicia. Al ver el sometimiento que estaban generando los conquistadores, eh, se comenzaron a ver rebeliones indígenas. Uh, in the face of the dominion of the conquistadors, some uh, indigenous rebellions would arise. 
entre los años 1532 y 1541, vimos la llamada Guerra del Mixtón. Between 1532 and 1541, uh, the War of Mixtón erupted. Esta fue la más grande rebelión indígena en tiempos de la colonia que puso en riesgo el dominio de la corona de Castilla en la región. This was the greatest uh, rebellion in the time that put the dominion of the crown of Castilla in the, in the region at risk, at stake. Los chichimecas no podían ser controlados fácilmente. Estos pobladores no daban tributos ni trabajaban para la corona de Castilla. Chichimecas could not be brought down easily. Uh, these people paid no tribute, neither they work for the crown of Castile. Además, eran hostiles a los conquistadores y defendían con armas en manos sus fronteras. They were also hostile towards the conquistadors and they defended uh, their territories arm in hand. Tenían ritos y costumbres que escandalizaban a los ibéricos. They had rights and customs that would astonish uh, the Iberians. Los conquistadores fueron avanzando sus dominios y explotando nuevos territorios. The conquistadors uh, advanced their dominion and explored new territories. Primeramente, buscando tierras mejores para la ganadería. First, they were looking for uh, better lands for cattle raising. También porque una de las tareas encomendadas por la corona era ev evangelizar a la población. Also because one of the tasks um, given by the crown was to evangelize uh, the locals. Luego porque se descubrieron ricas minas de plata. But then rich uh, silver mines were discovered. Había un ejército de sacerdotes. There was a priest army. Las misiones religiosas en algunos momentos contenían excesos eh, de la violencia de los conquistadores. At times, uh, the priest would um, contain the excess by the conquistadors. Incluso hubo sacerdotes que llegaron a simpatizar con ideas socialistas utópicas como Vasco de Quiroga en Michoacán o Bartolomé de las Casas. Some priests could even sympathize with uh, utopian socialist ideas uh, like Vasco de Quiroga en Michoacán or Bartolomé de las Casas. Pero la iglesia era ante todo una institución oscurantista. But the church was above all a backwards institution. Su papel fue extender el dominio imperial. Its role was to extend imperial dominion. Su función era terminar de someter y cooptar a los pueblos indígenas al nuevo régimen. Cuando los conquistadores descubrieron los yacimientos de plata, when the conquistadors uh, found about the, the silver uh, mines, eh, dominar las zonas de los chichimecas se convirtió en una cuestión principal. Uh, to uh, domain the chichimeca area uh, became a, a prime necessity. Había que dominar las zonas donde estaban las minas y también eh, donde se, se transportaban las eh, pues valiosas mercancías. The area where the mines were laid had to be uh, dominated uh, as well as the transport of these um, commodities to be assured. La guerra chichimeca pasa por varias fases, desde des defensivas hasta intentos de exterminio físico. The uh, Chichimecan War goes through many phases, uh, at first uh, defensive ones, uh, and after that exter uh, to exterminate them. La conquista de los Chichimecas tardó alrededor de un siglo. The conquest of the Chichimecas uh, lasted for a century. En las zonas donde se encontraban las culturas más desarrolladas, los conquistadores adoptaron viejas formas de explotación tributaria. In the areas where more developed cultures uh, were found, the conquistadors uh, adapted uh, the old uh, tributary manners. Se crearon las encomiendas, regiones donde los gobernantes tenían la función de proteger a la población y evangelizarla. Encomend encomiendas were created, and these were regions where the rulers had the function to protect the population and evangelize them. A cambio recibían los tributos y saqueaban las riquezas. In exchange, they got tribute and they uh, got loot uh, the, uh, the wealth. En las zonas donde se encontraban los pueblos menos avanzados y se encontraban las minas de plata, el desarrollo fue diferente. It was very different in the areas where the less developed people were found and where uh, the mines, uh, the silver mines uh, were found. 
primeramente se sometió a un sector de los indígenas a la esclavitud para trabajar en las minas. First, uh, some of the natives uh, were submitted to slavery uh, to work in the mines. El trabajo forzado sumado a la devastación de la población por las epidemias obligó a buscar más manos, más manos para el trabajo. The uh, forced work uh, adding to the devastation of the uh, population by the pandemics uh, forced the search for more hands uh, for work. Fue así que se trajeron esclavos provenientes de África para complementar la esclavitud indígena. In this uh, way, slaves uh, coming from Africa uh, were uh, reached uh, to uh, complement the indigenous slavery. Eh, el desarrollo de la técnica llevó a que fuera más rentable mantener trabajadores libres, the pero que eran sometidos of, a brutal explotación. Uh, the technical development uh, made it more profitable to, uh, to have uh, free workers submitted to a brutal exploitation. En un primer momento se, se mantuvo un trabajo remunerado para los trabajadores indígenas combinado con esclavitud africana. In the first moment, uh, there was, uh, uh, the, the mine workers were paid uh, salaries, but there were also uh, African slaves in the mines. Es interesante que en una de estas zonas donde se tuvo este desarrollo, en el Bajío, eh, fue el epicentro de la futura revolución de independencia en México. It is interesting to consider that uh, in the area where this uh, development was uh, laid, el Bajío, was uh, the center of a future rebellion during the independence revolution in Mexico. Que en 1810 se vivió una insurrección de masas. Uh, a mass um, insurrection uh, happened there uh, in 1810. Se calcula que entre los años 1503 y 1600 llegaron a España 153 mil kilogramos de oro y, y 7.4 millones de kilos de plata. Okay, It is believed that between uh, 1503 and uh, 1600, uh, it arrived to Spain about uh, 153,500 kilograms of gold and about 7.4 million eh, kilograms of silver. Lo que veíamos al otro lado del mundo era el desarrollo del comercio. Se llegó a América buscando nuevas rutas de comercio hacia la India y oro. In the other side of the world, the commerce was developing. Uh, America was reached uh, looking for new routes for commerce, uh, reaching the Indies and, uh, and gold. El comercio estaba limitado por los medios de intercambio. América dotó de la plata que impulsó al comercio mundial. Commerce was limited by uh, the lack of means of exchange. America gave a silver uh, that could uh, push forward world commerce. El Imperio Español era en muchos sentidos medi medieval. Instauró una sociedad semifeudal en América. Spanish Empire was in many ways medieval. Uh, it um, imposed a semifeudal society in America. Pese a su carácter, estaba sentando las, las bases de la destrucción del feudalismo. Uh, it was uh, setting down the basis uh, for the destruction of uh, feudalism, despite of its character. El sometimiento basado en la sangre y brutalidad, brutalidad contra los pueblos indígenas llevó a, una de, a un descomunal saqueo. Fue la base de la acumulación originaria capitalista. Submission uh, through blood and brutality against indigenous people uh, broke um, a huge uh, looting. It was the basis for the ordinary accumulation of capital. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next speaker will be Kaspar Ortli from the Swiss section of the IMT. Thank you, Alessio. I want to start my intervention with the question, what is a mode of production? The starting point of our analysis of any society should always be the real empirical organization of human beings in how they produce their means of subsistence. And out of these facts, we extract the essence and we generalize a mode of production. And in each stage of human development, 
we need to find what Marx calls the specific kind of production which predominates over the rest. For example, in feudalism, the essence is the exploitation of, of a surplus product from the peasants who work the land, land which belongs to a class of feudal lords, and the main means of production is the land. But after you have understood the, the essence of the feudal mode of production, you still don't understand how it was born and how in the end it gives rise to, an, to new class relations and a new mode of production. And it is true that there was very, very little development for the first 500 years or more, but then there was development in the late Middle Ages and capitalist relations started to form in a 400 year process inside the feudal system. For example, the growing commerce led to the production for market, which we call commodity production. This in turn revolutionized agriculture. The productivity of land rose and this permitted the development of bigger cities and a higher division of work. And what is essential here is that feudalism did permit the development of the productive forces until these forces outlived the feudal relations of production and the new class emerged that could replace these relations. So in, in Latin America, it's correct to call the Mexica society uh, based on Asian mode of production, but that is still an, an abstraction that does not explain anything by itself, but it helps analyzing this society because we need to find the, the, the essence that explains the limits of the development of such a society. What was, as Marx calls it, the hidden basis of the entire social edifice. The Aztec society was an agricultural society. Land was also the main means of production, but as Jorge explained, it was commonly owned and commonly worked on by commun local communities called Galipuli, who also elected their own leaders by themselves. And because there was no private property of the land, there were no classes in the strict sense. But what existed was exploitation of a surplus, uh, of a surplus product through taxation by a state who taxed these autonomous communes, the Galpuli, and the most developing, developed peoples, the Mexicas, they stood at the top of the hierarchy and they developed the state to exploit other peoples. And this led to the development of big cities and city-states with a huge state hierarchy and an apparatus. And in this state, the ruling families, they were not elected, but it was a hereditary ruling case. And with the rise of these societies, the division of work increased. They were artisans, for example, but they were employed by the ruling case. They didn't um, sell on the market, but there existed also merchants and even instances of slavery. So we see how new relations develop, new techniques develop. And as Marx said, at the certain stage of development, the material productive forces of society come into conflict with the existing relations of production. But in the case of the Mexicas, no new class developed that could impose new relations of production. Why not? What was the basis of the society, the one specific kind of production which predominates? It was the explosion, exploitation of the land in communal production. And this remained the key economic activity who had to sustain these huge cities. And in this main activity, there was no development of the, of the means of production or practically not. And this defined the sharp limits of the possibility of development from when on the big contradictions inside this, develop, this society developed. And this explains why they, the Mexicas needed to subdue even more communities. At the high point, they taxed more than 400 communities. And as Ubaldo explained, this increased the hatred by these communities against the Mexicas. And this level of hatred equalized the, the rising contradictions, it was just an expression of the rising contradiction which is essential to understand how the Spaniards uh, vinced against Mexico Tenochtitlan. So as I said, to call the, the mode of production of the Mexicas uh, part of an Asian mode of production does not by itself explain why they lost against the invaders, but it is an essential tool in the arsenal of Marxist analysis on how the, on, on the, on, to find out how the societies work, but we shouldn't apply it in a static manner 
as the same with, with feudalism, if you apply it in a static manner, you, don't, you can't see why, why capitalism developed. We need this, to see the societies in a dynamic way to see how the contradictions inside the societies developed over time. And as Ubaldo said, if they had lived a thousand years more, who knows what, what would have happened, but they did not. And Marxism permits us to understand why they did not. And by understanding the limits and the contradictions in this specific case of Asian mode of production, we can understand how it was possible for a lumpen pack of about 500 invaders to conquer a culture with at, it, at its high point had an army of 200,000 soldiers. Thank you. Well, thank you to you, Kasper, very much for this uh, contribution. Now, next speaker will be David uh, Ray from uh, the Spanish section. Hola, compañeros. En los últimos años, el régimen español, la derecha y lamentablemente también algunos en la izquierda, están resucitando el viejo argumento de que la conquista y esclavización de América fue una obra civilizadora. In the last year, the regime, the Spanish regime, the right and some of the left has been resuscitating the old argument that the conquest and enslavement of America was a work of civilization. Y que en todo caso fue menos brutal que las acciones del imperialismo británico o de Estados Unidos contra los nativos americanos. And that in any case, it was better than what the British Empire did to Native Americans. Los marxistas españoles estamos obligados a combatir esta falsa propaganda de autojustificación. The Spanish Marxists have the duty to combat this false propaganda of self-righteousness. Realmente la conquista tuvo un efecto doble. Fue decisiva para dar un impulso relevante al capitalismo naciente en Europa. In reality, the conquest had double effects. It was a decisive time to give impulse to the birthing capitalism in Europe. Pero tuvo efectos terribles en las poblaciones locales de América y en la propia sociedad española. But it had terrible effects in the locals in America and for Spanish society itself. Concretamente tuvo un efecto en conducir al naciente Estado español a un proceso de degeneración, declive, atraso y oscurantismo del que no se ha recuperado 500 años después. Concretely, it conducted the young Spanish nation into a process of degeneration, decline, backwardness, of which it hasn't been able to recover 500 years later. Hay que partir del hecho de que los embriones del capital manufacturero de Castilla, que es la parte principal de lo que hoy conocemos como España, we have to start from the embryonic capital uh, of manufacturers in Castile, which is what we now know as most of Spain, and it was crushed. Fueron aplastados en lo que se llamó la revuelta de los comuneros en 1521. It was crushed by what was called the revolt of the communards in 1521. In its essence, it was a civil war between the manufacturers of the cities in Castile and the big ranchers that exported wool to the Netherlands and England and had the support of the nobles and the crown. Yendo al punto, eh, los metales preciosos fueron canalizados desde España hacia el incipiente circuito económico capitalista europeo a través de dos formas principalmente. The precious metals were channeled from Spain to the European economic circuit through two different ways. En primer lugar, fueron utilizados para pagar los préstamos de los banqueros alemanes y genoveses que financiaban las guerras dinásticas de la corona española en Europa y el Mediterráneo. Mainly, they were used to pay the loans to German and Genovese banks that were financing the wars between dynasties of the Spanish monarchy in Europe and the Mediterranean. Y por otro lado, fueron utilizados para pagar la importación de bienes manufacturados procedentes de Europa. And to pay for the imports of manufactured goods in Europe. Eh, la monarquía española tenía el derecho legal 
de apropiarse del 20% de los, de los metales preciosos que llegaban de América. The Spanish monarchy had the right to appropriate 20% of the precious metals that were extracted. Aunque la cifra real superó el 30%. Even though the real numbers surpassed that of 30%. Y muchas veces se apropiaba de parte del oro y de la plata de los particulares. And many times they appropriated the silver and gold of commoners. Y todo lo utilizaba para sus aventuras guerreras. And everything was used in their adventurous wars. Mientras que los ingresos anuales de Carlos V eh, oscilaban en unos 2 millones de ducados, un ducado equivale actualmente a 167 euros. While the annual income of Charles V oscillated between 2 million of ducados, one ducado equals to 167 euros. Llegó a acumular créditos, préstamos personales por valor de 39 millones de ducados. He accumulated debt for 39 million ducados on personal loans. Eh, por ejemplo, solo, solamente la campaña militar de 1536 sobre la Provenza, en la actual Francia. The military campaign of 1536 over Provence in France. Consumió los ingresos de la corona de tres años. Consumed the income for the crown for three years. Por ejemplo, mantener la flota mediterránea en la época de Felipe II, en la segunda mitad del siglo XVI. For instance, to maintain the Mediterranean fleet during the times of Philip II. Suponía 2,5 millones de ducados anuales. Needed 2,5 million ducados every year. Y el coste del ejército de Flandes en los Países Bajos. And the price of the army for the Netherlands. Entre 1571 y 1577 costó 11,7 millones de ducados. Between 1571 and 1577 costed 11.7 million ducados. Esto equivale actualmente a 1,950 millones de euros. Today this would be 1,950 million euros. Y cuando el oro y la plata no eran suficientes para estas aventuras guerreras, se saqueaban los presupuestos de los reinos, de la corona española y de las ciudades. When silver and gold were not enough, the budgets for the different kingdoms that compose Spanish crown would be sacked. Y se imponía eh, impuestos abusivos a los campesinos que eran conducidos a, a hambre. Outrageous taxes would be put upon the peasants, which would lead them to hunger. La, so la sociedad española quedó arrasada en los siglos XV y XVI. Spanish society was left barren between the 15th and 16th century. Se abandonaron las obras públicas, las infraestructuras, el cuidado de los caminos. Public works were neglected, same with infrastructure and roads. Provocando el atraso interior y el aislamiento de las diferentes regiones y provincias que componían la, la corona española. Which led to the backwardness and isolation among the regions and provinces. El otro medio a través del cual se canalizó el oro, el oro y la plata americana desde España hacia Europa fue con la importación masiva de productos manufacturados para América y para la propia España. Another means through which gold and silver were channeled to America from Spain was with the import of products manufactured for America and esto, for its own Spain. Esto ya estaba preparado por el débil desarrollo manufacturero de Castilla, como ya, ya explicamos. This was prepared from the weak development of Castile, as we have previously explained. Otro efecto destructivo fue la inflación, lo que se llamó en aquella época la revolución de los precios. Another destructive effect was inflation, which was also called the rebellion of prices. Que alcanzó un 400% a lo largo del siglo XVI en España. El país que más sufrió la inflación en toda Europa. Which reached 400% throughout the 16th century in Spain, the worst country in Europe. Esto encarecía la producción interior y terminó por, de, terminó por destruir el débil tejido productivo. This jeopardized internal production and finished the destruction of weak productive forces. Mucha gente no sabe que España tiene el registro de más bancarrotas en pagos de la deuda pública que ninguna otra nación en la Tierra, 14. Many people don't know that Spanish has the largest registration for bankruptcies and public debt than any other country in the world, 
being 14. Siete de ellas en los siglos centrales de la conquista americana, en los siglos XVI y XVII. Curiosamente, seven cuando of, más plata, más dinero llegaba a España. Seven of which took place during the main years of the American conquest, so between the 16th and 18th century. Curiously, the time when Spain was seeing the most income. Mientras que la deuda que dejó Carlos V fue de 7,5 millones de ducados a mitad del siglo XVI. Well, the debt that was left behind by Charles V was, was of 7,5 million ducados. Esta llegó a los 100 millones a principios del siglo XVII. This one reached 100 million in 1601. Con Felipe IV, entre 1621 y 1627, With Philip IV, in, between 1621 and 1627, los genoveses se apropiaban del, del 76% de los metales preciosos que llegaban a España para cobrarse las deudas. The Genovese appropriated 76% of the precious metals that reached Spain in order to seal the debts. Esta era la España de los hidalgos empobrecidos con capas rotas, la España de la Inquisición, de las hogueras y de la decadencia general. This was the Spain of impoverished gentlemen, of the Inquisition, of the stakes, and general decadence. Marx describió este proceso en España como una putrefacción lenta y sin gloria. Marx described this process in Spain as a slow putrefaction with no glory. La burguesía española nunca pudo revertir esta situación por su atraso y su fusión con el viejo orden feudal. The Spanish bourgeoisie could never revert the situation because of its backwardness and fusion with the old feudal regime. Esta es la llamada España negra que pervive en nuestra monarquía, nuestro ejército, policía, jueces, en nuestra iglesia y en nuestros ricos oligarcas. This is what's called Black Spain that allows the monarchy, this, the military, the police and the judges and our church, our rich oligarchs. Pero las fuerzas luminosas del Estado español también existen y son más fuertes que nunca. But the luminous forces of the Spanish nation are stronger than ever. Solo la clase obrera está en disposición de terminar con este legado de atraso y oscuridad. It's only the working class that has the means to finish this legacy of backwardness and obscurity. Lo ha intentado incontables veces con hero enorme heroísmo, sacrificio y mártires y lo va a seguir intentando. No hay la menor duda sobre eso. They have tried so many times with enormous heroicism, sacrifice and martyrs, and they will keep trying. There's no doubt about that. Nuestros hermanos y hermanas de los pueblos originarios de América reclaman que España debe saldar la deuda de siglos de saqueo y genocidio. Our brothers and sisters of the towns in, Latin, in America claim that Spain has to seal the debt of after centuries of looting and genocide. La The rotten and reactionary oli Spanish oligarchy has shown that they're not going to do it. Pero la clase obrera española sí lo hará. Tenemos apuntada la cuenta y la vamos a devolver. But the Spanish working class will do it. We have written down a check and we will give it back. No con oro. Not with gold. Not with silver. But through rev socialist revolution that will shine brighter and stronger than all the precious met metals in the world together. Iluminará el camino de la liberación de todos los oprimidos y explotados en América y en todo el mundo. That will light the path for liberation of the oppressed and exploited in America and the rest of the world. Thank you very much, uh, uh, David. It was a great intervention. And now we have uh, uh, Nicolas Cueto from the Belgian section. Buenos días, camaradas. Antes de abordar la sublevación general liderada por Tupac Amaru II en 1780 en el actual Perú, before dealing with the general uprising led by Tupac Amaru in 1780 in the territory of present-day Peru, les voy a dar elementos de contexto. I will give him some background information. El objetivo de los españoles en las Américas fue extraer los metales preciosos como el oro o la plata por medio de la mita. The aim of the Spaniards in the Americas was to extract precious metals such as gold and silver by the means of mita. 
La mita era el trabajo forzoso que permitió al poder colonial colocar una séptima parte de la población indígena al trabajo en el sector privado como las minas, obrajes y haciendas. The mita was the forced labor that allowed the colonial power to place one in every seven indigenous people um, to work in the private, private sector of mines, textile, work, uh, workshops and farms. El problema es que hubo una caída demográfica de aproximadamente un 80% en el territorio del Imperio Inca, consecuencia de la colonización, como lo explicó Jorge. The problem is uh, that there was a demographic drop of approximately 80% in the territory of the Inca Empire as a result of colonization, just like Jorge said. En el siglo XVIII, la población era compuesta de 60% de indígenas camp campesinos. In the 18th century, uh, the population was composed by 60% es de of indigenous peasants. Es decir, que la mayoría de la población trabajaba en la agricultura en comunidades económicamente autónomas. This means that the most of the population worked in uh, farms, uh, farming in autonomous uh, uh, settlements. Para enriquecerse, la, la burguesía mercantilista de Lima necesitaba aumentar la mano de obra para poder extraer y exportar más oro. To become richer, the uh, merchant burguesía of Lima needed to increase the labor force in order to extract and export more gold. En la segunda mitad del siglo XVIII implementan reformas que van a ejercer una coerción económica para que los indígenas campesinos tengan que vender su excedente de producción. In the second half of the 18th century, they implemented reforms that could exert economic coercion so that the indigenous peasants uh, could have to sell their surplus production. O vender su fuerza de trabajo en las minas, obrajes y haciendas. Or sell their labor power in the mines, uh, textile workshops and farms. Esas reformas son el pago en efectivo del tributo y el reparto forzoso de mercancías a la población indígena. Uh, these reforms were the payment of the tribute in cash and the forced distribution of goods to the indigenous population. Los indígenas estaban obligados a aceptar y pagar las mercancías que traía el funcionario colonial. The indigenous people were uh, forced to accept and pay for the commodities brought by the colonial officials. El aumento de la mano de obra permitió que las exportaciones e importaciones cuadruplican entre 1740 y 1780. Cinco the increase in the labor force allowed exports and imports to quadruple uh, between 1740 and 1780. Estas reformas se convirtieron en mecanismos de saqueos de las provincias a favor de la burguesía mercantil de Lima y de la corona. Uh, these reforms became mechanisms for the plundering of the provinces in favor of the mercantile uh, burguesía of Lima and Spanish crown. El descontento de los indígenas se extendió a otras capas de la sociedad como los curacas. The discontent of the indigenous people spread to other layers of society such as the curacas. Administradores de las comunidades en el Incanato. Uh, who were administrators of communities in the former Inca society. Las autoridades coloniales utilizaban los curacas como intermediarios entre ellos y las masas indígenas explotadas. Uh, the colonial authorities used the curacas as intermediaries between themselves and the exploited indigenous masses. Eran una élite indígena con un estilo de vida comparable a la burguesía rural. They were uh, an indigenous elite uh, with a lifestyle comparable uh, to that of the rural bourgeoisie. En 1770, la última reforma de los repartos amenazaba las posesiones de los curacas. In 1770, um, the last reform of the distribution uh, threatened the possessions of the curacas. En caso los, los campesinos no eran solventes, el funcionario que hacía los repartos podía cobrarse con los bienes del curaca. If uh, peasants uh, were not solvent in some instance, uh, the official who made the distribution could cash in on the curaca's property. José Gabriel Condorcanqui, 
que tomará el nombre de Tupac Amaru II durante la rebelión en 1780. Eh, José Gabriel Condor Tanki, who took the name of Tupac Amaru II during the rebellion in 1780. Era un curaca en la provincia de Cusco. Was a curaca in the province of Cusco. Cusco era una de las regiones más empobrecidas por los repartos debido al bajo rendimiento de sus tierras. Cusco was uh, one of the regions most impoverished by the distribution of commodities due to the low uh, productivity of its farmlands. En la escuela de curacas de Cusco, Tupac Amaru se, famili se familiarizó con la obra del Inca Garcilaso de la Vega, una interpretación utópica y embellecida del Imperio Inca. In the school of Curacas uh, of Cusco, Tupac Amaru became familiar with the work of the Inca Garcilaso de la Vega, a utopian and embellished interpretation of the Inca Empire. Esta obra constituyó el elemento de unidad ideológica entre los curacas y los indígenas campesinos. Uh, the work of uh, this work constituted the element of ideological unity between the curacas and the peasant indigenous people. El empobrecimiento de las provincias, afectando primero los indígenas campesinos y precarizando hasta los curacas. Uh, the impoverish, impoverishment of the province, affecting first the indigenous peasants and uh, making even the curacas more precarious. Fue la base material de la alianza de clases de este movimiento. Was the material basis uh, of the alliance between the indigenous peasants and, uh, and, and this uh, movement. La rebelión liderada por Tupac Amaru hizo temblar la corona española y la burguesía de Lima. Uh, the rebellion led by Tupac Amaru shook the Spanish crown and the Lima bourgeoisie. Después de su captura en 1781, fue descuartizado y toda su familia fue ejecutada con excepción de su hijo menor. After being held prisoner in 1781, he was dismembered and his entire family was executed except for his youngest son. La, suble, la, suble, este, la insurrección fue totalmente derrotada en 1783. The insurrection was totally defeated in 1783. La sublevación general tuvo un impacto sobre toda la, todas las colonias y fue un símbolo para to, todos los pueblos oprimidos de las Américas. The general uprising had an impact on all of the colonies and was a symbol of all oppressed peoples in the Americas. La revolución de 1780 plantea la cuestión indígena, campesina, y fue un primer intento de resolverla. Uh, the revolution of 1780 raises the peasant indigenous uh, issues and was a first attempt to solve it. Aun si Tupac Amaru y los indígenas campesinos, campesinos hubier, hubiesen triunfado y aplicado el programa político de volver al incanato, Even if Tupac Amaru and indigenous peasants uh, had triumphed and implemented the political program of returning to the Incan Empire, no se hubiera solucionado el problema de fondo de la cuestión nacional indígena. The basic problem of the indigenous national issue would not have been solved. Como lo dice el marxista peruano José Carlos Mariategui sobre la cuestión. As the um, Peruvian Marxist José uh, Carlos Mariategui uh, says on this issue, la solución no es la creación de un estado burgués indígena que tendría todas las contradicciones internas y externas que caracterizan el estado burgués. The solution is not the creation of an indigenous bourgeois state uh, that would have all the internal and external contradictions that uh, characterize the bourgeois state. Como lo, ve lo vemos en la actualidad, tampoco basta con crear un estado plurinacional como en Ecuador y Bolivia. As we can see in the present day, it is not enough to create a plurinational state as, uh, as those in Ecuador and Bolivia. Para resolver la cuestión indígena, se necesita el programa del socialismo revolucionario. To solve the indigenous issue, the program of revolutionary socialism is needed. Concluyendo con una cita de Maria Tegui. Uh, finishing with a, a quote from Maria Tegui. La revolución latinoamericana será nada más y nada menos que una etapa, una fase de la Revolución Mundial. The Latin American Revolution will be nothing more and nothing less than, an sta than a, a stage, a phase of a world revolution. Será simplemente y puramente una revolución socialista. 
It will be simply and purely a socialist revolution. Thank you. Thank you for this contribution, Nicolas. Now, the last speaker will be Adrian Alvarado from uh, the Mexican section. Sí, muchas gracias. A la llegada de los españoles a Mesoamérica, que es el territorio que hoy abarca la mitad de México y Centroamérica. At the arrival of Spaniards uh, to Mesoamérica, which is uh, the territory and now uh, half of Mexico and Central America. Ya se habían desarrollado diversas civilizaciones. Entre las más relevantes encontramos a la cultura teotihuacana. Many um, cultures, uh, diverse cultures had already developed. Uh, amongst que, the most relevant, we find the Teotihuacan culture. Que se desarrolló en el Valle de México. Uh, which developed in the Valley of Mexico. La Maya que abarcó el sureste mexicano y parte de Centroamérica. Um, the Mayans uh, that were located in uh, Southeast Mexico and part of Central America. Y la civilización Mexica. And the Mexicas civilization. En 1521, en la región, vivían cerca de 11 millones de personas. In uh, 1521, um, there lived uh, 11 million people. Población que México alcanzó posteriormente hasta el año de 1910. A population that Mexico reached again uh, afterwards in the year of 1910. En el epicentro de la cultura mexica, la ciudad de México Tenochtitlan. Uh, at the core of uh, Mex uh, Mexica culture uh, in the city of Mexico, Tenochtitlan, habitaban cerca de 300 mil personas. Inhabited about uh, 300,000 people. En esa época, en las principales ciudades europeas, vivían cerca de 100 mil personas. At the time, in the main uh, European cities, lived about uh, uh, 100,000 people. Pero, ¿cómo prom ¿Cómo comprender desde la perspectiva del materialismo histórico? But uh, how are we to understand uh, under the perspective of historic materialism? Las sociedades mesoamericanas y en particular a la civilización más desarrollada, la Mexica. The Mesoamerican societies and in particular the most uh, developed one, uh, the Mexica. Las condiciones materiales de la zona impidieron el desarrollo de la economía basada en la ganadería. Uh, the uh, material conditions of the area uh, didn't allow the development of a, a, an economy based on uh, cattle raising. Además, en Mesoamérica no existían animales de tiro o de carga. Also, in Mesoamérica, there were known um, draft animals. Y no conocieron aplicaciones para inventos como la rueda. And they didn't know uh, applications for such inventions as the wheel. Y tecnologías que facilitaran la fundación del acero y sus diversas aplicaciones. Nor uh, technologies that could uh, allow for the uh, steel foundry and its diverse applications. Entre los mexicas, la propiedad de la tierra pertenecía a la comunidad Calpuli. Uh, amongst the mexicas, the uh, land ownership belonged to the community, uh, which is called the Calpuli. Que era la unidad básica económica, militar, administrativa y educativa. This was the basic economic, military, and educational and administrative uh, unity. unity. Y también, perten y también pertenecía al Estado. It also uh, belonged uh, to the state. Se ponía a disposición de los miembros para su explotación colectiva. Uh, it was put at the disposal of its members uh, for collective exploitation. Pero esta no era heredable ni se podía vender. But it uh, could not be inherited, nor uh, could be sold. El cultivo se realizaba mediante chinampas, que eran parcelas artificiales creadas sobre el lago. Um, the farming was uh, brought uh, through chinampas that were artificial land plots uh, created above the lake. Sobre el que fue construida Tenochtitlan. The lake uh, above which uh, Tenochtitlan was built. También crearon grandes canales de riego, presas, diques y depósitos fluviales. Uh, they Cinco also minutos. created uh, irrigation canals, uh, uh, dams and, um, and rain deposits. También los mayas explotaban la tierra de una manera colectiva. The Mayans also exploited uh, the land in a collective fashion. Con la diferencia que establecieron un sistema sedentario de explotación. Uh, with the difference that they establish a sedentary uh, exploitation process. Aquellos que trabajaban la tierra lo hacían de manera colectiva para su subsistencia. 
uh, those who would uh, work the land uh, worked collectively uh, in order to subsist. Y para pagar tributo a cada jefe de la comunidad, Calpulec. And uh, to pay a tribute uh, for um, the uh, leader of the, of the community, the Calpulec. Además, entre los estratos más bajos de la sociedad se encontraban los tamemes. Uh, also, in the lower uh, layers of society, uh, there were uh, the, the tamemes. Cargadores de todo tipo de mercancías. Carriers of all sorts of commodities. Y algunos esclavos, tlatlacotín. Some slaves, or tlaca, eh, tlatlacotín. Quienes pagaban alguna deuda, deuda o habían sido juzgados por un delito. Who were paying uh, some sort of debt or uh, had been judged by uh, some sort of crime. Pero el trabajo esclavo no fue fundamental en la estructura económica. But slave labor uh, was not uh, fundamental in the economic stru structure. La propiedad privada existía con algunas excepciones para los gobernantes. Uh, private uh, property existed as an exception for uh, some of the rulers. Uh, para los guerreros destacados en alguna batalla de relevancia. For outstanding warriors in a relevant battle. Y, los que, y, los, y las que poseían los templos. And the ones that were possessed by the priesthood. Pero esta tierra no se podía heredar. But this land uh, was not to be inherited. Eh, la nobleza tenía escuelas especiales para su educación, tribunales eh, especiales para ser juzgados y también agrupaciones militares. Uh, the nobility had uh, special schools uh, for their education, special tribunals uh, to be judged uh, and uh, military uh, agrupations. Entre ellos también existían grandes comerciantes, los postecas, que servían también como espías para el Estado. There were also uh, important merchants uh, or postecas that served as spies for the state. El Estado era centralizado y controlado por esta casta privilegiada. The state was centralized and controlled by this uh, privileged caste que glorificó la guerra con la finalidad de someter a otros pueblos y cobrarles un tributo which uh, glorified war uh, with the end uh, to submit other people and um, get tribute for them. El cual se realizaba mediante un encargado especial, Calpixque. This was made through an special manager or Calpixe. En la zona conquistada. In this uh, conquered zone. El tributo era un porcentaje de lo producido por los pueblos y era entregado para que este se administrara a uh, tribute was a percentage of uh, what was produced by uh, the by, uh, yeah, by the villages, and it was um, given uh, to be administrated and um, transported by, uh, by nobility. Y trasladarlo a la nobleza de México Tenochtitlan. Uh, and it was, uh, yeah, it was given to the, to the nobility of México Tenochtitlan. Además, el tributo sufragaba grandes obras de construcción y sostenía las campañas militares. Through tribute, uh, big uh, construction works uh, were paid for, and uh, all, as well as uh, military campaigns. Esta práctica ha sido documentada uh, por el Código Mendoza. Uh, this practice was uh, documented in the Mendoza Codex. En el cual, mediante dibujos y códigos. In which, uh, through drawings and uh, codes, Comunicó la conquista de diversos pueblos por parte de los mexicas. Uh, it was um, a portrait, the conquest of uh, many people uh, on behalf of the mexicas. Y los tributos que se les pagaba. And the tributes that were uh, paid to them. Esta estructura de sometimiento en el imperio mexica facilitó la conquista de los españoles. This uh, submission structure in the Mexican empire Uh, made it easy for the Spaniard uh, conquistadors. Existe una peculiaridad de las civilizaciones mesoamericanas. There is a peculiarity in Mesoamerican civilizations. Si definimos a una clase social como aquellos grandes grupos. If we are to define a social class as huge groups. Que se diferencian entre sí por el lugar que ocupan en la producción social that are uh, different from one another uh, because of the place they have in social production. Por su relación con los medios de producción. For yes. the relation to the productive means. 
y por su papel en la organización social del trabajo. And for their role in a social uh, organizing of labor. La nobleza, los sacerdotes, comerciantes y altos mandos militares entre las civilizaciones mesoamericanas. Nobility, priests, merchants, and high ranks, uh, military uh, high ranks in the uh, Mesoamerican civilizations. No eran propietarios de la tierra. Were not the owners of the land. Salvo algunas excepciones except for some exceptions. Pero en las cuales la, la tierra podía pasar nuevamente a propiedad del Estado. In which a land could again uh, come to the hands of the state. Por lo que es más certero definirlos como una casta militar y sacerdotal. So uh, they are more accurately uh, defined as a military and a priest uh, caste. Marx realizó una, aproxima una aproximación a este modo de producción que denominó asiático. Uh, Marx uh, defined this mode of production as Asian. En sus escritos sobre las formaciones económicas precapitalistas. In his writings about uh, the uh, precapitalist economic formations. Eh, contenida en su recopilación de anotaciones. Which uh, are contained in his notebooks. En los elementos fundamentales para la crítica de la economía política such as the fundamental elements for the critic of uh, political economics. Y en aquellos en los que analiza la dominación británica sobre la India. And those in which he analyzes uh, British uh, dominance over India. Eh, como observamos, no fue una sociedad igualitaria, no la podemos idealizar. As we can see, uh, this was not an egalitarian society. Uh, it is not to be idealized. Como algunos latinoamericanistas lo hacen like some uh, Latin Americanists do. Sin embargo, reconocemos que sobre esta base económica se levantaron las culturas mesoamericanas. Nonetheless, uh, we recognize it was on this uh, economic basis that Mesoamerican cultures raised. Que aunque no alcanzaron a desarrollar una visión del mundo completamente ra ra eh, racional, even though they didn't reach a completely rational worldview, la casta privilegiada liberada del trabajo manual. The privileged uh, caste uh, free from uh, hand labor. Desarrolló avances importantes en el estudio del movimiento de los astros. Developed important advancements in the study of the movement of the stars. Y por consecuencia una concepción correcta del tiempo. And uh, a right uh, conception of time as a consequence of this. Los mayas conocían el número cero, su esencia y significado. Uh, Mayans came to know the number zero uh, as much as his its uh, significance and essence. Aunque su pensamiento aún está impregnado de mitos y concepciones mágicas. Uh, even though uh, their thought was still impregnated with uh, myths and magical conceptions. También surgieron grandes poetas y escritores. They also had uh, many great uh, writers and poets. Solo el estudio del materialismo histórico nos permitirá comprender. Only by studying historic materialism we will come to comprehend. La profundidad mesoamérica y aquella civilización que ha sido su más grande expresión, los mexicas. The depths of Mesoamerica and uh, which uh, came to be the, its greatest civilization, the mexicas. Y entender la expresión plasmada en uno de sus poemas and uh, to understand the expression that was uh, portrayed in one of their poems. En tanto que permanezca el mundo, as long as the world remains, no acabará la fama y la gloria de México Tenochtitlan. There will be no end for the fame and glory of Mexico Tenochtitlan. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adrian, for this wonderful intervention. Well, we had a really participated debate we have still some time, and so I call uh, Jorge Martin to sum up uh, this discussion. I thought it was a very interesting uh, discussion, dealing with different aspects. The question of the Asiatic mode of uh, production, which was dealt with by several uh, of the comrades. And it was approached from a correct point of view. That is, historical materialism is not a series of abstract categories that you can pick and choose from and then superimpose onto real uh, living conditions. But rather, it's the opposite. 
in order to understand a given society or a given socio-economic formation, you have to analyze it in its uh, internal functioning, its internal uh, laws. And on the basis of this detailed study, try to draw out its main general uh, features. And one, once you've done that, then abstract general categories can be useful in order to classify this uh, each economic uh, system, whether it's, uh, it's a type of feudalism or it's a type of slave society or, is it, or, is it, or similar to the Asiatic mode of production. I think uh, the intervention by David Ray was also very interesting about the question of the impact of the conquest of America in uh, determining the backwardness of Spain and also in um, demolishing the myths which are, which are still relevant today, which are part of the ideology of the ruling class in Spain. Also, Nicolás' intervention was very interesting because he brought out the real uh, economic and social basis of the, uh, of the uprising by Tupac Amaru uh, at the end of the 18th century. And there's another interesting aspect of this, the way in which the Spanish conquistadors used some of the structures of the previous uh, society for their own benefit. For instance, how the mita, the, the labor tribute under the Incas was used in order to provide labor under the Spanish uh, conquistadors for the silver mines in Potosí. But uh, while the form was the same, the, the content of it changed a lot. It was no longer a form of tribute by the, the um, community to the state. It was more similar to a form of enslavement. And tens of thousands of uh, indigenous people died in the mines in uh, Potosí because of the extreme uh, exploitation of the working conditions there. Also, that intervention brought out another uh, aspect, which is how uh, the Spanish conquest of the Americas was not a one-sided uh, process. There was enormous resistance. There were rebellions throughout the period. Uh, another aspect of this, which has not been mentioned, is the, the creation of uh, free, slave, uh, uh, free slave societies, the, the Maroons or the Cimarrones, in different parts of Latin America. At the end of the day, perhaps the most important aspect of the Spanish conquest of the Americas is precisely the creation of the world market after, which gave rise to capitalism. The, the, the Spaniards, after conquering America, continued and uh, colonized uh, the Philippines, creating an enormous uh, current of trade between China, America, and Europe. And of course, the role that uh, the conquest of America played in the primitive accumulation of capital, which uh, some comrades have uh, mentioned. And I would like to give the last word to Marx, which describes the process in the following way. He said in Capital, the discovery of gold and silver in America, the extirpation, enslavement, and entombment in mines of the aboriginal population, the beginning of the conquest and looting of the East Indies, the turning of Africa into a warrant for the commercial hunting of black skins, signal the rosy, the rosy dawn of the era of capitalist production. These idyllic proceedings, and he is being ironic, of course, are the chief momenta of, capi of primitive accumulation. And as a conclusion, he said, capital comes into the world dripping from head to foot, from every pore, with blood and dirt. And uh, capitalism, nevertheless, played an enormously progressive role from the point of view of the development of the productive forces. But this is no longer the case. And it is our task today to put an end to this rotten, violent, and evil system which increasingly condemns millions to poverty, starvation, and a life of exploitation which is not worthy of the name, and open the way for the socialist transformation of society, which will release the pent-up product productive forces which can no longer fit in this rotten system.